Hello everybody! In this video I'm going to show you how to clean up all the small parts of a bench plane. This is the sixth video in a series that I'm doing where I'm showing the details on how to restore a bench plane. Left to right, this is an old Stanley number no. 5 that was a total rust bucket when I started. You've got the bottom, the frog, the iron, the iron cap, and the lever cap that's not quite completed yet. But now we're on to the small parts. I dug into my small parts pile to find examples of everything. And here's a breakdown of the parts I'm going to be working on. First up are the tote knob nuts and bolts. Here I've got the lever cap screw, the plain iron screw, the frog adjustment screw, the plain tote screw, the frog plate, the frog plate screw, depth adjustment nut. Stanley made in the older planes a, a small nut and the larger one a, a brass depth adjustment nut and up here on top are parts that are unique to the bedrock series of planes. It uses these frog screws that go into the frog pins right here to hold that frog in place. That's it for the breakdown of the part. The first thing I'm going to do is separate out everything that's got a screw slot and I'm going to clean them up with a dental pick. This will give you a good excuse to go see your dentist. They're always bringing the stuff in there leaving it sit unattended that's your chance to get dental picks. Of course, I'm kidding. I get mine, I bought some off of eBay. So you want to take that dental pick, get into the screw slots, and clean out as much rust as what you can. Focusing on those tight corners down inside the bottom of the screw slot. Sounds just like being at the dentist's office. When doing your brass screws, you want to make sure you do it gentle, you don't want to scratch the brass. I'm just basically cleaning the dirt out when I do this. It's not at all unusual to find these full of paint. I got lucky none of these had paint, but I did pick some of the dirtiest, rustiest ones that I had. Next, you're going to get some 150 grit sandpaper. What you're going to want to do is fold your paper in a way that it's going to fit tight inside the slots, but not so tight that you can't sand back and forth. So I folded this over once. I can make it thicker by putting another piece of sandpaper on the inside instead of folding it again to get a triple thickness. I can fold it over on itself again to get four times the thickness. So whatever it takes to make it fit the slots. Each slot's going to be a little bit different, so you're going to have to adjust as you go and make them fit. Once you've got it fit, it's just a simple matter of sanding it out, use the corner. I'm tilting my paper to get the corner down into the bottom of the screw. Turn your screws. Keep looking to see where you've got to apply more pressure and remove the rust and crud that's on the inside of those screw notches. If you have any burrs, they'll be on the inside of the screw slot and the outside. This is the way you'll take the burrs out also. And you'll do your brass nut slots the same way you do the regular metal. All the slots I turn a couple times while I'm sanding. So now all of my screw slots are looking nice and shiny. Now I'm going to give a little extra attention to the frog adjustment screw. Folded some paper to fit inside that slot that runs around it. Just like the, the screw slots, you want to sand it clean on the inside because your wire wheel and there isn't anything else that's going to get down in there like what this sandpaper does. When you're cleaning up these slots, Make sure you refold your paper so you always have fresh sandpaper. It's not worn out and not working for you. A lot of times screwdrivers slip inside these slots and they get burrs. I remove them with 150 grit paper on the sanding block. You're just going to focus your efforts on the burr as you work around the screw slot. And I normally end up doing the entire head of the screw before I go over to my uh, wire wheel. For the screws with flat tops, I go over to my lapping station. I don't want to round those tops over and I don't want to take too much off. There's normally some type of a machining mark on there and you don't want to sand them off. But if you have burrs, you can uh, carefully remove the burrs by putting them flat or excessive rust. Put them flat on your lapping paper and slide them back and forth. Check it periodically to make sure that you're not taking too much off don't want to lose those machine marks. A lot of this rust is going to come off on the wire wheel. So just get rid of the burrs, leave the machine marks. 
this frog screw is a good example of where I just took the burr off and you can still see the machine marks are there. If your frog adjustment plate has a lot of rust like this one does, it won't clean up good on the wire wheel by itself, bring it over to your lapping station, keep it flat, slide it back and forth, and check it. Keep that up until you're happy with the results. Normally these don't have machining marks, so you can't really overdo it. While you're at it, you want to work, might as well go ahead and work the uh, narrow sides at the same time. Flip it all around and get those. This frog adjustment plate had deep pitting on both sides, so I stopped right here. There's no sense removing any more metal. It's not going to make your plane function any better. A lot of times you'll find these washers are cupped, probably from over tightening of the frog screws. Who knows? But you can take care of that. You'll need a flat metal surface and a hammer. Put the side that's been dished up and just put them back down like they're supposed to be. If your washers are rusted like these are, take them back over to your lapping station. Just put a finger on them. Keep it flat. Flip it over, check it. Do the other side. Keep going until you've uh, removed as much of the rust and the pitting as reasonably possible. Both washers had some significant rust and pitting dents from where the screws were tightened down into them. So I'm going to stop right here. Now all of these small parts are ready for the wire wheel. I'm going to save the uh, depth adjustment nuts for last. You want to use a fine wire wheel, not, not any heavy coarse wire. cleaned up thousands of small parts and it's inevitable that something's going to go flying. The last thing I'm going to do is the brass nuts for the bolts for the toe to the knob. You don't want to apply a lot of pressure to these. I don't like to overshine them. I just like to even it up and make them look better. You can go as far as you want to go. I like to use the small whiskey wires on the edge of the wheel. And here's what the small parts look like all cleaned up. Most of the time they'll come out looking better than these. I picked some of the worst ones I had. Yours are probably not going to be this bad. The next step is to put some lubrication on them. Right now these parts have a shiny almost like new looking appearance and the lubrication I use kind of dulls them down makes them look a little bit more authentic. You can go to your local uh, gun store even Walmart I think has this stuff, it's called rim oil. We're going to give them a nice coat and let them sit while I do the, the uh, depth adjustment knob. First thing I'm going to do to them is use that toothbrush and scrub them with simple green, rinse them and dry them off. Here's a look at them after scrubbing. With age, brass will tarnish. And on the old collectible planes, that's a desirable thing to have is that original tarnish that would be on the brass. So I'm going to do the one on the left to try to leave some of the, the aged look and the one on the right I'm going to make it look like new. The way I do the one on the left, next step is going to use a brass wire brush. I'm going to use the wire brush all around the outside paying close attention that I'm not removing too much of the tarnish and creating shiny brass. After the brass it's on the steel wool. And there's how it came out. It's not all shiny and new looking. After I used the steel wool, I wiped it down with a blue shop paper towel. It had a little bit of my dirty oil left in it. That kind of evened the tones out. For the one I'm going to clean up all the way, I'm going to use a piece of sanding sponge that I cut down smaller on my bandsaw. I'm going to clean that recess area first. You take the sponge, fit it into the recess, Start turning it back and forth and check it often. See how it's looking. Already starting to look better. You work it flat, you get it in there, push it into the outside edge, rubbing and turning the whole time. So I've got that recessed area about like I want it. I'm going to take some steel wool and finish it off the same way. 
and there's what it ends up looking like pretty good for the outside of the depth adjustment knob it's back over to the wire wheel that's it for the wire wheel I'm going to use the sanding sponge to get down into the tight corners where the wire wheel didn't get and then follow that up with some steel wool and there's a look at it when it's all done I don't think I'm going to complain about this one it's looking really good the last thing I have to do is wipe the oil off the rest of the small parts you can see the difference in the, how they've darkened compared to what they were before I put the oil on if there's excess oil in the screw slots, take your air hose and blow them out. And that's it. All the small parts are done. I forgot to mention on that old brass depth adjustment nut that you can also use your sanding sponge on that to uh, take off a little more of the patina if you want. But here's a glance over all the parts. They're ready to be put back on the plane. Most of them belong to the number five that I'm working on in the series. So that's almost done. We're going to be able to see this thing get put back together and taken for a test drive. The last thing to do, and that'll be in the next video, is the tote and knob. So doing a complete plane restoration is a lot of work. It takes a lot of time, a lot of attention and detail, and those small parts are important. So I hope this helps you out in your projects. We're done for today. It's time for supper. Bye.